Anti-Gaddafi fighters have taken control of the airport in the fugitive colonel's hometown of Sirte, the last stronghold of his loyalist. Reinforcements have been called in ahead of a fresh assault in the face of stiff resistance. Civilians continue to flee the violence in the besieged city, blaming NATO for only adding to their problems. Well, let's cross live now to Sarah Flounders from the anti-war group International Action Center. Thanks for being with us, Sarah. Locals say power and water have run out, as well as petrol and other goods, and NATO hitting civilian buildings. Now, how does this tie in with their mission to protect those civilians? Well, from the very first day, this has never been about protecting civilians. It has been overwhelmingly a war on civilians. NATO is responsible for now into the seventh month of bombing, more than 30,000 sorties, uh, more than uh, 10,000 actual bombing locations. Again and again and again, it has been the civilians and the civilian infrastructure that has been targeted. CERT is now without water, without Without food, without medical supplies, without operating hospitals. It is NATO, this is a NATO war where the, the so called rebels are an auxiliary force that has been incapable of even taking any ground on their own that is not already pulverized, destroyed by NATO bombardment. This is, in, this is a complete NATO war for the domination and control of the oil of Libya at a time of enormous and growing economic crisis in Europe and in the U.S., and they want to lay hold of this. It's an effort to destroy the resistance movement in Libya, and uh, that has continued under the most heroic conditions and under the most difficult conditions where everything is from the sky, uh, using from bunker busters to anti-personnel weapons to uh, drones to, you know, one weapon after another that are part of the U.S. and NATO artillery. You're describing a very, very grim situation. Are we seeing a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding on the ground in Libya? I mean, who's going to help these people if NATO doesn't? Well, NATO hasn't helped at all. They are only interested in the destruction and in getting the oil pumping again. And we can see this by the way in which NATO has carried out a war in Afghanistan to this day. We can see at the U.S. war in Iraq that there's no consideration for the civilians. Eight years into in Iraq, and there's still not a functioning electrical grid for the population. There's still not functioning schools and uh, pure water. So it's certainly in Libya, the idea that there would be any concern for the civilian population, that is never NATO's concern. It's a military operation entirely. And the idea of getting things, even in Tripoli, up and running uh, after a month, that still has not happened. So in one of your articles earlier this year, you say that imperialist military intervention poses the gravest danger for the people of the entire region. What kind of danger are you talking about? Well, from the beginning, it's not only been a war for control and domination of Libya and for seizing hold of the oil and also the enormous cash reserves, uh, more than $130 billion. But it has been a weapon against the uh, Egyptian and uh, Tunisian and the what's, what's called the Arab Spring, the revolutionary upheaval sweeping the region, that the, an enormous war going on right in Libya is a way of pushing back and, and strengthening the hand of reality action in the entire region. So it is a danger. It's a real danger what NATO is doing. It's ships off the region. It's control of the air and having a military base. It's finding a home for AFRICOM, which is the uh, U.S. NATO um, command and control for all of Africa. So this is really uh, an opening war into the region and the idea that it has any humanitarian concerns that has never been on NATO's agenda. We can't see it in any of the past wars NATO has been involved in, and we don't see it in Libya. To this day, uh, none of that is happening. Supplies aren't coming into any of the cities that NATO has bombed and destroyed. Instead, small rebel uh, bands come in totally incapable of supplying any of the civilian needs.
Right, Sarah Flanders from the anti-war group, the International Action Center. Thank you very much for talking to us this hour.